Hello, this is Nancy Wilson from Heart and Roadcase Royale, and you're listening to Brigade Radio 1. Brigade Radio 1. got first and foremost uh, producer Loda Hadley who actually uh, coming off the magic stone and uh, putting the financing together on many interesting pictures. Hopefully we'll talk about some of it. And then with us, the moment we've all been waiting for, Mr. Tyler Maine. Hey, how you guys doing? Fant- well, now that you're here, fantastic. If you need me to bring you up to speed, if you've been living in a trench outside of you know Kabul, you may not know who this guy is, but you've seen him wreck shop and X-Men, Troy, opposite Brad Pitt as Michael Myers, Halloween 1 and 2, many things. Many, many interesting projects where you dismantle people systematically. Well, you gotta, you know, you got to make a living somehow, right? No, yes. yeah, you do, and that's yes. a good way to make a living. If exactly. you can do that kind of thing on film, it's good. But, I mean, you've had a... I mean, it's been a great career for you because you've done some marquee films with some marquee moments, and, I mean, that's not something any of us can... Not all of us can brag about that. Yeah, I've been very lucky. Uh-huh. Very, very lucky. And when you look back, you realize, you know, you were the guy who helped make Hugh Jackman what he is. Exactly. You ever corner him and say, hey, where's my cut? I mean, you were nothing until you fought me as Sabretooth. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, we haven't had that conversation yet, no. but maybe I should have that. I'll one. call him up for you. <laughs> All right. I got you. You, got, I got you got the direct line to him? Yeah. All no, right. I was actually bummed at watching uh, uh, Troy. I think they killed your character much too early in that. Well, you know, uh, Brad Pitt was the star of that, so mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't really follow the, the, the way the story should go. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I was just glad to be in it and uh, right. had a good part uh, playing King Ajax, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, because I saw you going out sort of uh, John Wayne Alamo style with like a couple of, you know, guys under each arm and, you know, a saber through you, and you're still fighting, and they're trying to take <laughs> you down. I mean, you bring that kind of presence to a film, and I thought... Man, this this guy's got to go out in just a massive melee of chaos. Well, why didn't you write the film then? I was yeah, on exactly. it. You know? <laughs> Warner Brothers exactly. refused to take my call at the time. Uh, but you know what? I really did like the cast, actually. Eric Bana and those guys. They put a good group together around you. So you yeah. had a chance to work with some great people. I did. Like I say, I've been very blessed to work with a lot of the top people. And mm-hmm. uh, I've enjoyed it and had a great time working with everybody on every picture I've done. Yeah, and you've got some great death scenes. And some death scenes that aren't even death scenes because you come back sometimes. Like the Michael Myers thing. Well, exactly. I'm, it's kind of hard to, to kill Michael Myers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, see, yeah. you know when you got that role you're like i am gold man i'm gonna be in a franchise they're gonna need me for episode after episode after episode right did they give that talk well you know they they have talked to me about another one mm-hmm. um wow. but it's been put on hold for right now so uh, yeah. we'll have to see what happens with that because i would think that uh, sometimes they use that as a bargaining chip against you say look we've got part one and two ready to go essentially or you know there'll be a part two so why don't we give you this fee you know, instead of you saying, you know, and they'll probably tell you, you'd be a comic book icon, convention guy, and you're probably like, no, 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 no. Listen, man, I just got off this Brad Pitt picture. I don't need this. I'm going to play Michael Myers the way, you know, Peter O'Toole would do it or some master <laughs> thespian, you know. I'm not here you're just that. to be shot up and blown you're up. Do that. I'm going to give this character life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, that was a great take on it. I don't know if Peter O'Toole would actually. Uh, want to do <laughs> I Michael heard he Meyer. was in the running. Was he I in the running? He was in the running. What, what, was he just a little too skinny? Or? I think his uh, agent just became difficult. Let that yeah, be a hard lesson. Hard I think he, he, he kept trying to speak with the mask on. <laughs> that, that, yeah, he couldn't really. Get, he couldn't do the he Lawrence of Arabia accent with, with the mask. With the British accent, it right, just didn't right. work. He kept trying to. No, I mean, obviously, I think that you've actually uh, transcended as a performer somewhat because clearly you were brought in many times, probably in the beginning because of your size and stature and presence right and then they could find out wait a minute this guy although he's got a pretty dynamic history in wrestling that a lot of people at the time probably knew you for this guy can actually deliver a line and that people don't realize i worked with steven seagal you don't know how tough that is as he had a hard time doing 
you know, when you show up with the presence you bring and you can actually act, people are like, holy shit, this is going to be phenomenal. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's uh, it, it's uh, taken a lot of hard work. I've mm-hmm. done a lot of training and I take it very serious, you know, and, and that's what you have to do. Uh, my size has limited me for some roles. And I mean, I'm not going to be the uh, love interest or whatever. Uh, Why not? Why couldn't you do Well, that? you never know. You never know. Maybe a, a comedy love interest. I mean, I, I fall can in see... love with a midget. Huh? Right, right. Well, I was actually <laughs> hey, going to say. Let's I do can... that. Let's do that. I can <laughs> see. We get, I... We, let's get right. <laughs> uh, no, I can see where let's maybe they, they sit around in the, for the remake of, you know, they re- did the remake of, uh, you know, uh, Willy Wonka. They don't want you for the Oompa Loompa part. Or I can see you being rolled, rolled out of those roles. But, I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Because you've got sort of a sensitivity. And the camera works around things like that. I'm gonna, You know what? We're going to talk to the studios about this. This, this shit's got to change. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> and obviously, let's you, get might, ugly with them. you might be the instrument in changing that. Because you've got main productions. Right? Main entertainment, yeah. Main entertainment. Main entertainment. Me. And... Your goal with this production company is to take innovative work, keep it independent where you can maintain control, right? Remain artistic with it, right? Maintain your integrity with it, exactly. That's fiscal great. responsibility, and do something productive. Yeah, you know, and, and we're trying to do um, smaller budget pictures because the bottom line is it is business, and uh, what we want to do is we want to get a best re- in return for the investors. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we've the first few projects we've picked are smaller budgets. Uh, we have Penance Lane, which is up, which uh, we're going to be uh, starting uh, hopefully very shortly. We have uh, the six-time DP of all the uh, Saw pictures, David Armstrong, who is going to be uh, directing it for us making his directorial debut with that picture. Mm -hmm. And as you uh, can guess, it is a horror thriller. Mm -hmm. Uh, Way to pigeonhole the guy. Well, you know, hey, what can you say? What can you say? <laughs> it's, you know, I, I mean, I've, I, I've been very lucky enough to develop such a good fan base uh, with the Halloween franchise. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like the first picture to do uh, would be to do a horror thriller. And that's where we're going with our first one. If that's what your gut tells you to do, that's without question what you need to do. But I'll tell you, in talking to you, I, I believe that your roles, yes, got you going with the fan base. But I've seen how you are. I hear how you talk. And it's you that continues that relationship with the fan base because you're by far very good at interacting with people. You understand what the fan means. Doing an independent production, you have to appreciate what the fan can bring dollar-wise to the box office. And here, you never stick your middle finger up like other people we've worked with or know. You're always very down-to-earth. And I think that if you have a fan base rolling, a lot of it's got to do with not just who you play but who you are as a person, I would think. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm just who I am. I'm just the uh, Canadian boy, you know, that uh, happened to make it. Oh, that's working against you, buddy. Uh, Hey, 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 relax, relax. (laughs) Us Canadians are taking over everything, man. Uh, (laughs) No, but, you know, I mean, it's... I you I just I'm who I am you know and I just uh, want to give back to the fans mm-hmm. you know because without the fans what I realize and what I learned through the wrestling is without the fans I don't have a job right right, right. you know and so why why be rude to them yeah exactly know? literally in wrestling the fans are your barometer I mean you can tell whether you're going to be employed next week based on how they react when you walk into the arena I would think it, pretty much pretty much uh-huh. yeah my job was to uh, piss them off as much as I could and uh, right. I seem to do that pretty good well during the musical <laughs> break you and I you and I'll do a little wrestling just to kind of relive the old days. <laughs> Better subscribe to this channel before you look uncool.